Hello, welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at Hurst Castle. <clears throat> Hurst Castle is an artillery fort built, well, was built by Henry VIII on Hurst Spit, um, down in Hampshire. Built on the mainland, it covers the Solent at its narrowest point, looking out towards the Isle of Wight, which is directly in that direction there. Built between 1541 and 1544, it formed part of the King's Device Force Coastal Protection Programme, and this was against invasion from France and the Holy Roman Empire. It also defended the western entrance to the Solon Waterway. The early castle had a central keep, which you can see here, just this, this bit here, uh, and three bastions, one, two, and the third one is just behind and in 1547 was equipped with 26 guns. It was expensive to operate due to its size, but it formed one of the most powerful forts along the coast. During the English Civil War in the 1640s, Hurst was held by Parliament and was used briefly detained to detain King Charles I before his execution in 1649. It continued in use during the 18th century but fell into disrepair the spit being often frequented by smugglers. Repairs were made during the Revolutionary and Napoleonic Wars with France and the castle was modernised to enable it to hold 24 pounder guns. Fresh fears of invasion in the 1850s led to 32 pounders being installed and the new gun batteries being laid out on both sides of the castle. See there and there. Between 1861 and 1874, 61 gun positions were built. These held the heavy weapons, massive 12 and a half inch, 38 ton rifle muzzle loaded guns, later to be replaced by the lighter, more technically advanced weapons. And there are some of those guns still in situ um, within the castle. During World War I, the castle formed part of a network of defences around the Solent and was rearmed again during World War II. It was decommissioned from the military in 1956 and it passed into control of the Ministry of Works. Now it is run jointly between English Heritage and the Friends of Hearst Castle. Coastal erosion has become a growing problem over the years despite protection. And during this time, or during the life of the castle, the spit has seen four lighthouses, with one still in existence and is still fully operational today, which you can just see here. I've put links to the castle opening times and also the uh, boat times in the description and uh, description below. There's two main ways in to uh, the castle. Firstly. You can walk in along this long sandy spit here, which I'm going to do a little bit with you in a moment or two. Um, but it is pretty loose underfoot, doable. But unless you're a keen walker, I wouldn't. I, I would take. There is an easier option. <clears throat> On a lovely day, it's a it's a good walk. It's a nice walk. Um, but on a very windy day, depending on whether the wind's blowing in from the west or the east. Um, it can either be very hard work in uh, whichever direction against if, you, if you're walking into the wind. The second option um, is to get a boat, a little ferry boat, out of Keyhaven. Um, various times of the day, operational um, throughout the summer. I'm not sure about the winter, so check the website to make sure that uh, it's operational. And obviously, it's weather dependent, so you may get out here by boat and then find out it's cancelled and have to walk back. Be warned. So if you like what you see, don't forget, hit that like button, and if you wish to see more of my virtual tours, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. I'm going to now uh, zoom out of this, and we're going to go back to where the uh, where you can park your car if you wish to walk in. There's a, there's a number of places you can park, so I'm going to, I'm going to show you. So I'm going to come out of that, <coughs> excuse me, and then I'm going to scoot back. And I'm going to zoom out a bit. In fact, I'm going to zoom out completely so you can see what part of the country in relation to everything else that it is. Let's take that off as well. And I'm going to zoom right out. So as you can see, it's right on the south coast of England, right in the centre. 
hiding behind the uh, Isle of Wight or the Isle of Wight. So it's there, you can see it's the narrowest point. So anything coming in from France or Spain or Portugal or from Italy would come up this way and come through this little funnel and this is where it was so well um, guarded. There is also another fort on this side. So even if you sailed either, you know, if you sailed down the middle, you're going to get it from both sides. So we're going to, you can see the long spit. This is all marshland in here. Now this is Milford on Sea here. And there's a number of car parks up here. Um, and the Needle's Eye Cafe. There's a number of car parks here and literally you can walk at the begin very beginning of the spit down here and walk straight down the road. Or you can find your way to this area here, salt grass, salt grass Lane, which you can park. There's roadside parking along here and up along here to about this point here. However, in the summer that is always packed, so don't rely on parking in these two places. The other thing to remember as well, check the tides, on high tide this road can flood. Or you can park in Key Haven in the car park and catch the boat from along here. All signposted, you can't miss it. But again, check the times of sailing and make sure it's operational on the day that you, uh, you choose to visit. So we're going to go on a street view now. Go. Have a quick look at one of these. So the view that you're going to see, you can see the cars where the cars are parked along that uh, the road I just told you about, just up there. And that is the spit that you walk down, and the castle is right down at the very end there. And that in the distance, that is the Isle of Wight. You've got the needles. If you go back that way, if you keep following the coast down, you eventually you come to come to Bournemouth. Um, you hit Muddyford and Christchurch first. So I'm not going to walk the whole way of uh, bird's eye view of the spit. <coughs> Isle of Wight and the castle and just about to see the lighthouse. And this is looking back over the, over the marshes and back towards Key Havens down in here. Let's have a look at this one. Now we're on top of the spit. You see the length and it's like very fine, well, fine shingle. And again, you can just see the castle in the distance. So like I said, it's a good walk. <clears throat> Coming into the castle now, or into the castle grounds, excuse me. <coughs> you can actually walk all the way around, depending on uh, weather and tide. But if you have come out here, um, if you've walked out here, then you should be able to walk all the way around. Um, and I say, the reason I mention that is because, uh, which I'll show you in a minute or two, you'll see there's there's some, there's some sea defences that you have to clamber over. Um, so if you're not that steady on your feet, uh, not advisable. I wouldn't try, I wouldn't risk it. But if you're okay, then uh, no no problems at all. So we're going to take a look around. We're going to go around the front of the boat, uh, boat, around the front of the castle first. So this is the view as you approach the castle, and you can see that the uh, this is the. to uh, get on the right track, land it here. 
So you can see the sea defences just been totally eroded, and you can see that the uh, this is the newer part of the castle. And all these things that were bricked up and uh, have metal covers over them. This is where the guns, gun emplacements. You can see someone there just climbing over. So it's actually a ladder, four or five steps up, leg over, and then four or five steps back down. So like I said, if you're not able to do that, don't go around the front. So we're gonna keep on going. Should be able to get the other side of this. You can see it there. And there's um, there's a number of these that you have to clamber across or, or under, depending. That over there is the Isle of Wight. This bit here is one of the three bastions that are part of the original structure. Part of the original structure of the castle. Get a better view over towards the, uh, the Isle of Wight. Now it's not very far across there. I'm not sure what the distance is, but it's not it's not very far. A couple of miles. So anyone who thinks they're a good swimmer, go and cut the miles. That's no problem. But those currents, by the time you get out of there, depending on which way the current's flowing. You're either going to end up in Portsmouth or you're going to be heading out towards the Channel Islands. Don't even think about trying to swim down here. Those currents are lethal and they I can't emphasize that enough around here. You just wouldn't make it. You would not make it. So many boats get into trouble around here. It's unbelievable. You can see it that you know where the sea defenses are at its worst. That these this metal is thick sheet steel. But you can see how corroded it's become. So we're going to keep on going out to the end of the very end of the spit here. If I can. Not liking it too much today. I might come out, plonk myself down somewhere else. So we've just walked all the way around the outside there. Let's zoom in a bit more. You can clearly see now the three bastions that were built around the central. Uh, central castle and then these extensions were built around here and there's also a wall all the way around to the rear there so we're going to take a look now go here and you'll see the lighthouse which is still in operation it's the only one that survives um, the very edge of the castle That's looking back towards Key Haven and the mainland. That's out across the Solent. And that bit of land there is the uh, the edge of the uh, Isle of Wight. You can continue to walk on down here. You can walk more or less, I think you can walk, I've walked down here, all the way to the very end. But again, only do it on a good day. So back again. Different view of the castle and of the lighthouse. And the walk you can walk all and say you can walk all the way around here and this is the uh, main entrance into the castle and that's where you catch the ferry so you've got you know minimal walk my house this is the rear of the castle and the castle walls On top of the uh, 
for inside the castle and I'm just on the outside wall. Clean the area there, don't know what happened there. Let's see, because uh, you can climb, do you have access? That's the same as before. That takes me back to Bazali, back to the cafe. Strange. My picture here, see where that takes me. Ah, oh, there you go, that's better. So now you've got a really good idea. That's one of the gun batteries looking out to the right and back along the spit. You can see that it's, it's not very wide across there. Um, out towards the Isle of Wight and you see it on a good day you'd have a very good view and the fog and the mist and the seas rolling in um, you'd have a job to look to the edge of that parapet there <laughs> you just wouldn't see a thing and again looking back inland so it gives you an idea in the castle itself you can walk all around the grounds there's a there's a tea shop in there a uh, little gift shop I think um, lots of lots of little exhibitions it's a it's a worth it's worth worth coming in in in, in to have a look around and plus you see the guns and those guns the, the the big guns that I talked about earlier um, 38 ton rifle muzzle loading guns they're absolutely monstrous the noise when those were fired must have they must have all been deaf they really must have been so it's definitely worth a visit you can see that the ferry goes all the way back along here you can see if I like it actually uh, going on the ferry route here look there you go so it's only a little boat does about half a dozen of you that's a nice little ride. Yeah, it's a nice little ride that. Takes you in through the marshes. So have a look down here, you'll see as you come into uh, Key Haven. There you go. Walled up on the side. You don't want, you don't have to go down the ladders there. <laughs> <laughs> there is a pontoon further down there's a pontoon that you can uh, that you go on uh, and you just literally you just clock there pontoon there <laughs> you go down onto the pontoon and you catch the boat from there yeah you don't have to climb down those ladders so uh, that is first castle uh, well worth a visit Easy, you could easily make a good afternoon out of it or a good morning out of it or take a picnic with you spend the day down there or walk down spend the day um, but like I said if you, if you pick your day be wise with your day go on a day when it's when it's nice and warm and sunny um, otherwise it's a miserable walk and the boats may or may not run uh, so yeah pick your day but it's well worth a visit, can't emphasise that enough. Got plenty of other places to go. Milford on Sea is a nice little village with a few coffee shops and uh, bars and restaurants and things like that. And a few, uh, you know, a few gifty type shops. Or you can head over towards Livington and do a bit of shopping and have a mood around in Livington, which is another nice place. Uh, I've also done a video of uh, Livington and I've also done a video of the uh, Sea Walk, which is from. Key Haven, and it follows the, the what they call the sea wall, which is where I'm, where I'm tracing the arrow there, which goes all the way around Pennington Marshes, the old salt marshes, and it takes you all the way into uh, into Limington. And from Key Haven to Limington, uh, one way is around five miles. So if you did park up in Key Haven and walk all the way down and walk the way back, it's a ten-mile round trip. If you're cycling, 
it's, and it's dead easy because it's all flat gravel tracks so it's a you know either if, you, if you're going to cycle it brilliant stay in, park up in Kiev and cycle into Limington come back again two days two two places you can go so yeah that's uh Hearst Castle of course you've also got the Isle of Wight on your doorstep with uh, a ferry leaving from uh, Limington wherever Limington's from yeah there Limington which goes from Limington and goes to Yarmouth so plenty to see and do around here plenty to see and do so like I said hope you've enjoyed that if you like what you see please hit the like button and if you wish to see more of my virtual tours please please make sure you hit the subscribe button so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video bye